just your love, it's enough for me. Now I'm lying, cause you live in me. Your genuine love shines through me. My heart is yours to serve faithfully. your love, it's enough for me, now I'm lying cause you live in me, your genuine love. Hello, I just want to do a quick testimony of my Christian journey. So I've been a Christian for um, three years now and um, there has been lots of ups and downs and it really has been a um, roller coaster of a ride for me. But um, I'm truly grateful for um, what God um, has done in my life and is continuing to do in my life. Um, I'm thankful for the people that he has allowed me to um, encounter and um, for the church that he has um, blessed me with, Passion Church. Um, I just want to say that um, I have learned so much um, about God and um, who he is because of the help of my spiritual elders and um, pastor and pastora um i'm truly grateful and um truly thankful for everything that they have done and um i just want to encourage everyone as well if you're not um, part of um a support group yet or um a community where you truly feel like you belong to um please give us a message or um dm um one of um us through our facebook page and i'm sure one of us will get back to you but um yeah i'm just really beyond blessed and um grateful and humbled um to have um very supportive people who continue to believe in me and continue to uh, motivate me and push me to become um the person that God wants me to be. Thank you.
Hello everyone. Appearing on your screen is the um, Passion Church account details, and we highly encourage you to give your tithes and offering. Um, God said in the Bible that um, He wants to bless us so we can be a blessing to others. So um, if you want to give, give, um, and we highly encourage it. Thank you. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone who has joined us today. Amen. And uh, I just want to welcome everyone and um, just uh, get out of your, wherever you are, if you're sitting down, you know, come, come and be ready to worship God with us today. And um, just want to encourage everyone that no, ma no matter where you are right now, just come and come as you are and let us just worship the Lord together because we are the church, um, even though we're not in the building, uh, the physical building, we are still able to worship as one. Amen. So uh, let us just start this uh, with a prayer. Um, amen. <sighs> Hallelujah, Father God. Uh, Lord Jesus, um, we just want to come before you. We want to just uh, thank you for this new day um, that you have given to us, that we can come and praise you and worship you. And just forget about everything that's been happening and just simply come come to you. And uh, Father God, I pray that as we worship, you will continue to open the eyes, the ears, and the hearts of your people. Um, that they may um, internalize uh, the lyrics of these songs. That um, it's not just lyrics, but may we, may we sing it from our hearts, the meanings of these songs. And uh, God, I pray that your Holy Spirit may... Um, just uh, go before us, be wherever um, wherever uh, everyone is right now and um, help them to know that you are present. You are present in their rooms, in their uh, lounges, kitchens, wherever you are. If you're out and about, God is with you. Amen. And uh, Father God, uh, we just want to surrender this worship to you and may you have all the glory, all the honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's uh, let's worship. Let's praise the Lord um, for all that He's done throughout the the week that we've just uh, finished, and um, just come come to Him with thanksgiving and uh, with a joyful heart. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Even if we're at home or out and about, let's praise Him. We are not limited. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's 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 just praise Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My Savior. My Savior, Redeemer, lifting me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, I will never be the same because you came near from the everlasting to the world we live. The Father's only Savior, Redeemer, lifting me from the miry clay, Almighty, forever, I will never be the same, cause you came near, from the everlasting, to the world we live, the Father's only Son, come on church, let's declare. You live, you die, 
you've done as this song said God and uh, Father God we continue to um, just leave everything behind and focus on you focus on your presence right now wherever we are God and um, Father God help us to just um, continue to be in your presence and um, may you speak to us um, to our hearts right now and Lord may you help us to just leave anything that's concerning us right now all, all our worries god and you know cast our our worries all on you god because you wanna you want to exchange it for your peace god and so lord we come to you as we are and we just want to focus, be in your presence, Jesus. You are not looking for good voices, good song lyrics. You are searching for a heart that really worships you. So God, um, I pray right now you help us just worship you. Help us to just concentrate on your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Just concentrate. Concentrate on your presence, God. Everywhere. Hallelujah. Lord. less of us and more of you. If we have somehow been distracted throughout everything that's going on around us, help us to come back and worship you, our first love. And just praise you and thank you, God, for who you are for what you've done and what is yet to come, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, oh Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, oh Lord. When the music fades Stripped away, and I 
you, God. Yes, Lord. We continue to be in your presence and focus on you. Focus on your presence. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God, to away from all the distractions. 
continue to praise you, God, for who you are and what you've done and what is yet to come, God. Lord, thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, God. Thank you that your mercies are new every morning. And so, God, thank you, Jesus, that you never change. that we can declare you our immutable God, never changing God. Thank you that your kindness is forever. Thank you that your goodness is forever. Your mercy is forever. When we fail you, you stay the same, God. And you're just so, so good, Jesus. You're so good, Jesus. No matter how many times we fail, your mercies are new. Your goodness is the same. Jesus. Thank you, God, that your mercy, your mercy is forever, and it helps us to draw closer to you, God. Lord, help us to reflect wherever we are. And just continue to focus and declare how good you are. Reflect on the things that you have brought us from. Because without you, we would not be where we are today. We are nothing. We are nothing apart from your presence. And so, God, I just want to continue worshiping you, giving you all the honor and praise, God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Your kindness leads me to repentance. Your goodness draws me to your side. Your mercy calls me to be like you. Your favor is my
Your goodness draws me to your side. Your mercy calls me to be like you. Your favor is my delight. Every day I'll awake in my praise and pour out a song from my heart. You are good. You are good. You are good. And your mercy. Amen. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, just uh, thank you for coming to worship with us. And so now I just want to introduce our speaker today and uh, our, our speaker. And um, may you be blessed by his word uh, through um, his servant leader, uh, Pastor Benny. Praise the Lord. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, people, our friends, our families, and brethren all over the world. Once again, we would like to welcome you, Passion Church, your church, our church. And today, I hope and I believe that God is going to bless us of the blessing that is beyond measure and beyond expectation. So just prepare yourselves as we listen and as we bless with the word and the promises of the Lord that he has prepared for us today. Amen. If you could please turn your Bible with me in the book of Joshua chapter 8, verse 1 to 2. Joshua chapter, uh, chapter 8, verses 1 to 2. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Be not be afraid. Be not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack I. For I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai. 
his people, his city, and his land. You shall do to I and its king as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves. Set an ambush behind the city. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's close our eyes and start in prayer. And let's ask for the anointing and the revelations and the leading of the Holy Spirit among us today. Father God in heaven, Lord, we thank you for another day, Lord, that we can worship with you. We can worship with our brethren, Father God, worshiping you in our midst. That, Lord, that despite of the busy week that we've had, Lord, we are here giving you praises and glory unto your name. Father God, speak to your children right now that not my word be spoken, but only the word that the Holy Spirit would ask me to do. Father God, bless each and every one of us. Inspire us, Father God, wonderfully of your wonderful words that may we continuously serve you and see, Father God, your lordship, your headship, Father God, in every area of our lives. Father God, bless your word. Let your Holy Spirit, Father God, Lord, be upon us today. All this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. This month, we're going to be calling, we're going to be uh, discussing and have a series of the theme that we call Culture of the Cold. Culture of the Cold, meaning to say, ang kultura or the lifestyle of those people who have been redeemed and saved and become a part of God's family. Lord, lahat po tayo, nung tinawag po tayo ng Panginoon, God has given us a new identity. God has given us a new culture, a new lifestyle. We're going to abandon the, the old self that we, we were once have in our lives. And today, the culture that God is going to let us know, it is for everyone who were born of God, it is the culture of arising and attacking. So our title for today, it's Arise and Attack. Amen? Tell to your neighbor, tell to your seatmate, Arise and attack. Every Christian, every believer of Christ, you are called to arise and attack. You have to arise from a deep slumber. You have to arise from a, de uh, from a big defeat. You have to arise from the deep uh, uh, and, and big failure in your life. And not only that you're going to arise by the presence of God and by the power of God, you're also called to attack any works of the enemy. Not only in your life, but also in the life of the people around you. So lahat ng mga tinawag natin at tanak ng Diyos ay tinawag upang bumangon at umatake sa lahat ng gawa ng kaaway. You are called to arise and attack. Why arising and attacking are so important in a spiritual realm? Okay? We're talking all about the spiritual battle. Why arising and attacking in the spiritual realm are so important. You know what? In any sports or battle, to win the match or the battle is not just to be defensively genius, but to be offensively aggressive or ferocious. Hindi po pwedeng puro ka na lamang defensa. Sangga ka ng sangga, but you are not attacking or you are not becoming offensively aggressive or ferocious. Basketball doesn't win by how good you dribble the ball, but by offense when shooting it. Just like any other sports, football, tennis, or even hockey, like any other sports shall be won not only by being good defensively, but by attacking offensively. You know what, mga kapatid? Same thing with our spiritual life. You know, one thing when I was praying to the Lord and God really impressed in my heart, you know, the reason why, why most people don't have a victorious life because we are so busy just becoming so defensive when the enemy is attacking us. There's really nothing wrong with us. There's really nothing wrong with that. For us to be defensive and really good in defensive when the enemy is attacking us. But I'm telling you right now, a victorious and triumphant life is not just all about covering yourself. It is just all about the, the, uh, defending yourself from any flaming arrows. Amen? And attacks of the enemy. 
And as we try to uncover the word of the Lord today, you will know and you will realize why defensively good is not good enough. Amen? Many Christians are so full of intellectual knowledge about Christianity, but with so minimal application when facing life's actual battle. Maraming Christiano, you know how to pray. Any question, you know how to pray. You know how to worship God. You know how to cast out evil spirit. You know how to, to, to unwelcome the influence of the evil schemes of the enemy. Sometimes we just know them just by our mere thoughts, by the theory that we have. But when the actual life's battle comes in and comes into the scenario, we tend to forget how to use them. The purpose of this message for us today is not to feel you condemned. It's not to make you feel guilty about this thing. But for you to realize that life is not all about becoming so defensive. But to be ferociously, ferociously and aggressively defensive in the spiritual battle. Maraming kristyano ang galing sa practice pero paglaban na, ibinababa natin yung weapon natin at kinakalimutan natin yung lahat ng mga natutunan natin mula sa salita ng Diyos at mula sa Diyos mismo. We tend to become so unaware that we're trying to bring down all our weapon and started to cry in the midst of the battle. Kapatid, it is not, it is not a bad thing to cry before God. Especially during your training, especially during your prayer, especially during the time of worship, it's nice to praise the Lord and worship the Lord. But I'm telling you right now, it is not a good thing in a battle that you're going to start to cry. Amen? Battle should needs that we have to fight. Yung laban ay dapat hinaharap ng may katapangan at hindi ng may pag-iyak. Amen po ba? Sabi ko nga po, it is okay to cry during the training. But don't ever, ever cry in the midst of the battle that you are facing that you might gonna find yourselves in. Amen? Biriin mo yun? Sumusugod ka sa laban, bigla kang iiyak. Sa halip na you're going, instead of using your spiritual weapon to demolish the strongholds of the enemy, all your, all, all your fellow soldiers and fellow armies of God can see you crying on one side. Mga kapatid, that's not the right thing. Today, God is telling you, you are called to be offensive against any works of the enemy. Amen po ba? Information is nothing. Ideas are nothing. If we will not use them when we are in the midst of our battle, a place where, where we are trained for. Marami sa ating binigan ni Lord ng training para handa tayo when we face the battle and to conquer them. Amen? Sometimes we are full of, of, of religious knowledge. Sometimes we are full of biblical doctrines. But how, but how I'm gonna ask you this wonderful question today. How do you use them when we are in the life's actual battle? Amen? It is something that we have to reflect on. You know, most Christians nowadays have the dilemma of always being on the defensive mode, but not defensively. Amen? Let me go ito. Most Christians nowadays have the dilemma of always being on the defensive mode, but not defensively. Many people right now, we are so busy and engrossed defending ourselves from the attacks of the enemy. That is why most Christians, we cannot advance our spiritual growth. That's why as Christians, we cannot advance how to conquer the city, how to win our family for Christ. That's why we cannot even win our friends for Christ. You know the reason why? Because you're spending most of your time defending and becoming so defensively a genius to cover yourself from the attacks of the enemy. They are good, but they are not good enough for you to be a victorious and a triumphant Christian in this life. Attack, attack, attack. 
No battle can be won by just being defensively good. Instead, we need to be great offensively. Dapat tayo aatake ngayon. You know, God is telling to you right now as you're listening to this message, God is calling you and empowered you to attack and, and demolish any stronghold and the foothold that the enemy has put in your life, in your family, in your city, in your workplace because there's something in you that you can make a big difference and changes in your life and in the life of the people around you. Life is a battle. Mga kapatid, life is a battle. Amen? Everyone who were born in the family of God are enlisted armies of God and called for a spiritual battle. Tinan niyo po yung sinabi doon kanina in the book of Joshua chapter 8 verse 1b. Sabi doon, Take the whole army with you and go up and attack I. Amen? I is the group of people who's trying to conquer the nation of God, the people of God. But God has instructed His men, the great, mighty, and valor armies of God. Ang sabi niyang, take the whole army with you. Amen? Kapanid, haven't you realized that you are called to be an army of God? Amen? If you've been born of God, if you've been born again, if you have a personal relationship with God, you are automatic enlisted army of our living God. And because you are an army, there is a battle that we face day to day. Araw-araw, meron tayong dingmaang kinakaharap. Kaya huwag kang magpapatumpik-tumpik. Don't feel so relaxed and lax because the spiritual battle is real. Because life is a battle. But on the other hand, ang sabi po dito, you cannot win a battle which you don't know exists or battle you don't know you are part of. Hindi mo may papanalo yung isang digmaan na hindi mo alam na nag e pala. At hindi mo, mala, hindi mo may papanalo ang isang digmaan na hindi mo alam na ikaw ay kabahagi nito. Kapatid, I'm telling you right now, this is a great warning from the Lord for everyone who's listening right now. Christian life, as I said before, it is not a picnic in the park, but it is a battle in the war zone. Hallelujah, Jesus. Most people, they say, ay, may warfare pala, hindi ko alam, may laban pala. That's why most people, they are already being attacked by the enemy, but they are not aware of. Amen? Hallelujah. Unless every Christian has realized that there is a spiritual battle that we have to face daily, there's no way we can face the battle victoriously. Dapat ma-realize mo. The enemy is after you and also we must be after our enemy to attack them and to demolish their strongholds in our lives. Mula sa paggising mo sa umaga hanggang sa pagtulog mo sa gabi, we are surrounded by lots of mini battles that we face daily. From the moment you woke up, from the moment that you're going to rest at night, we are surrounded with lots of mini battles that we face daily from decision making, giving a commitment, a choice to trust God despite of adversities, the clarity instead of confusion, giving in to the influence of your thought than the thoughts of God. They are battle. Amen? Magnifying our needs rather than God's providence and provision, there, that, that is also another spiritual battle. And every thought that hinder our faith and relationship with the Lord is considered battle in our daily lives. And no, you know what? They normally come through a small foothold in us. Alam mo mga kapatid, alam mo yung mga spiritual battle natin? They didn't start big. They didn't come big in our lives. As a matter of fact, there is the what we call foothold. Amen? Say to yourself, foothold. They normally come through small foothold in us. Yung mga buta sa, sa buhay natin that the thoughts of the enemy can easily penetrate. And for us, not knowingly, that they, that we have given the enemy a foothold. That is why the word of the Lord said, don't give an enemy a foothold. Yung foothold, do, yung foothold po, yung kapatid, dyan papasok yung mga kaisipan. 
na hindi mo namamalayan kasi butas lang siya. Foothold lang siya. When we allow the foothold to our enemies, it soon becomes a stronghold. Unnoticeably. Hindi natin namamalayan yung foothold, if we not become aware that there's a foothold of the enemy or the access of the enemy in our lives, sooner or later, the foothold will become a stronghold. Yung dating lagusan magiging kuta. From foothold into stronghold. What are the footholds that can develop into spiritual strongholds? Okay, I have, I have made and listed some of the few things. What are the footholds? O yung mga maliliit na bagay, those small things that seems acceptable. Those things that seems a, a, a normal part or a norm in your life. And sometimes this foothold seems so uh, unharmful. Okay? Mukha namang hindi siya harmful. But if we try to have a look and we not become so aware and concerned about this foothold, it's gonna give us chaos and problems at the end. What are the footholds? Number one, being certain to becoming unbelief. From being lazy into insubmission. From having a self-reliance, it can develop into pride. Too much appetite for being having a sin of gluttony. Unforgiveness, a simple unforgiveness can lead into the stronghold of hatred. Wrong priority becoming and leading you into wrong destination. Comfort and luxury. Comfort and luxury, they are not bad. They are not bad at all. But having too much comfort and luxury can lead you to the sin of materialism. Another one, wrong motives to envy and jealousy. Amen. Nakita mo yung kapitbahe mo, meron ito. You also would like to have them. Amen? Because you have the wrong motives, it will lead you to envy and jealousy. And another one, the last from among the things I have listed, being concerned into worry. Amen? Pastor, it's not too bad naman, I'm just concerned. But I'm telling you this, too much concern can easily develop into worry. Because too much concern is just a hairline difference from having a worry life. Amen? To develop into a worried life. Remember, remember that the stronghold starts just a simple accepted norm. But it will eventually develop into something that can control us. Alam mo ang enemy kapag pumasok yan, if the enemy is trying to influence you, he will just influence you in such a way that you won't notice. Just like the things I have mentioned. Amen? Being uncertain, being lazy, self-reliance, there are good terms. Too much appetite, sometimes unforgiveness, sometimes wrong priority. And the enemy will teach you how to rationalize the wrong thing that we are doing. Kapatid, this is one of the battle. This is one of the strongholds of the enemy that we have to demolish. And God has empowered us to demolish them. Hallelujah, Jesus. We are armed with a spiritual weapon against darkness and spiritual strongholds. Okay, I'm going to say it again. We are armed with a spiritual weapon against darkness and spiritual strongholds. Ang sabi po doon sa 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapon we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have the divine power. Listen to this. The power, the might that we have, ang sabi rito, they have the divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretensions that set itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. The number one enemy that we have to demolish is to demolish the wrong thought in us. The wrong argument in us. The wrong pretension in us that trying to hinder us and to bring us away from God. Alam mo, maraming kaisipan ngayon nagpapalayo sa'yo sa Diyos. One of them is this. You only live once. 
One day, I rebuked one of my friends and I said, well, I beg to disagree. I don't and I won't live once. I will live twice. Because anyone in Christ, he's a new creation and there's a gift of eternal life. Amen? Kapatid, huwag kayong maniniwalang you only live once. Amen? YOLO, you only live once. This is unbiblically, this is unbiblically not accepted. Amen po ba? You know what? There's a lot of, there's a lot of thoughts right now trying to deceive and hinder the people of God from the biblical truth. Kapatid, this is the things that you are called to demolish as God said so. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's time we go up and attack. We have the battle won ahead of us and made us conquer the enemy. Tinan niyo po to, listen to this. In Joshua chapter 8, verse 1b, For I have delivered you, for I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. Grabe. Even before you, before, even before you go and attack the enemy, God has given you the victory already. Amen? Have you realized that? That is why the enemy doesn't want you to attack. Amen? Kaya kapatid, as you're listening right now, bumangon ka at atakihin mo at panghawakan mo yung salita ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. Because the enemy knows that once you have used the power and the authority that God has given you, the victory is upon is now on your hands. Amen. Amen po ba? Sabi nga rito, we have the battle won ahead. Hindi ka pa lumalaban, basta tumayo ka, nanindigan ka, at umatake ka, the victory is already yours in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. Sabi doon, Exodus chapter 23, chapter 23, verse 24 to 26, Do not bow down before their gods or worship them or follow their practices. You must demolish them and break the sacred stones to pieces. That's what we are, we are called for. Worship the Lord your God, and this is the blessing. And this is the promise of God. Every time we demol demolish the things of the enemy, as I said, worship the Lord your God, and His blessings will be on your food and water. Grabe. I will take away sickness among you, and none will be scary or be barren in your land. I will give you a full lifespan. Meaning to say, God is going to prolong your life. What are those things that God is going to receive, that God is going to give you, that you're going to receive? The reward of attacking and conquering is this. Blessing, healing, fruitfulness, and long life. Kapatid, this is the reason that's why the enemy doesn't want you to attack them any strongholds and any foothold of the enemy. Do you know the reason why? Because the enemy knows that God is going to bless you beyond measure, that God is going to heal you beyond compare, that God is going to make you fruitful beyond expectation and beyond measure in your life, and God is going to give you long life. But only and only when you start to know how to attack the work of the enemy. You know, I'm telling you this, the enemy... Satan, Lucifer, the old serpent, is wise. Don't belittle him. But sorry for him because the God we're serving is the most powerful among any other gods of this world. Letter G, gods. Amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. And the enemy would like to distract, distract you by being obsessively engrossed, by being defensive in your spiritual life but not becoming so offensive in a spiritual battle. Dati-dati, ang umaatake sa'yo ang kaaway. Amen? Today, God is telling you, you are going to demolish the strongholds and footholds of the enemy in your life. Many church people haven't experienced the blessing, the healing, the fruitfulness, and the long life. They haven't experienced these things because they were busy and engrossed being in the defensive side always. That is why we cannot advance. But today, it is our time to arise and attack 
and conquer. Ulitin ko po, it is our time to arise and attack and conquer, but only with the powerful message, with the powerful word and spirit of our living God. Nauubos na yung time and strength natin sa kasasangga sa mga atake ng kaaway. Have you experienced that? Sometimes we become so engrossed sa kasasangga. Just like what I've said, there is no battle or sports that can be won by becoming so defensively great. We have to attack from now on. As, in, as they say, the best defense is offense. The best defense is offense. Amen? Kapag lagi mong inaatake ngayon yung mga works at saka mga foothold, strongholds ng enemy, you know the reason? One of the day, you will realize the enemy can no longer attack you. Why? Because it's now you attacking them. Amen? Especially the strongholds of the wrong thinking. Especially the, 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 the strongholds and the footholds of the wrong concept about God, about His power, about His greatness, about His Holy Spirit. Sometimes we have to battle it out and God is going to give us victory. Amen? Because of Christ, God has empowered every believer that can demolish any work of the enemy. Kapatid, wag mong isiping talunan ka. Ulitin ko po. Wag mong isiping talunan ka. If Christ is with you, who can be against you? If God's power is upon you, no one can stand in front of you. Because Christ has empowered you so that you can demolish any work of the enemy by the power of His wonderful Spirit. Ang sabi doon sa 2 Timothy, I really like this verse. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of sound mind. Kapatid, hindi ka binigyan ni Lord ng espiritu ng pagkatakot, kundi ng kapangyarihan at pag-ibig na sisira sa mga kuta ng kaaway na nilagay ng kaaway sa pamilya mo at naging sa sarili mong buhay. Hallelujah. 1 John 4.4 4, You are God, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Amen? Hindi ka magagapi ng anumang espiritong o maali-aligit sa'yo trying to deceive you. Any spirit trying to deceive you. Any spirit trying to hinder you on your growth and your service in the Lord. Kung nakikinig ka ngayon at may mga bagay na pumipigil sa'yo so you can serve the Lord, I'm telling you this, you are more you are more powerful and you are conqueror and you are more than conqueror than those hindrances. You are more conqueror, you are more powerful than those hindrances, than those adversities, than those adversaries in your life right now because God has called you to arise and attack. Hallelujah, Jesus. Tinawag ka ni Lord na bumangon at umatake and be victorious. Hallelujah, Jesus. Do not ever, ever be offensively aggressive without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Kapatid, it is only through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can overcome, that we can conquer the city, that we can conquer our family, that we can win our family for Christ. Don't ever, ever fight the battle without the empowerment of God's Holy Spirit within us. Sabi sa Matthew 28, 19, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That is why the power we have, the victory we have, is not because we are strong, but simply because God is upon us. Amen? You are called to conquer and possess. Ulitin ko po. You are called to conquer and possess the land. Amen? Gusto nyo bang mag-conquer at mag-possess ng mga bagay na pinangako sa iyo ng Panginoon? Kapatid, start attacking. Okay? And start arising from the deep slumber. Bumangon ka sa, sa matindi mong pagkakatulog. Bumangon ka sa matindi mong pagkakasakit. Bumangon ka sa matindi mong pagkaka, pagkakalupig ng kaawe sa iyo before. Because today is a new day for you to be victorious. 
in your Christian journey with the Lord. We are called to conquer and possess. Amen? So I have, I have begun to deliver Sihon and his country over to you. Now begin to conquer and possess the land. Deuteronomy chapter 231. Our God is our Jehovah Sabawat, the Lord of hosts. The Lord who's going to make us to conquer the things that we have never conquered before. We will conquer them right now. Amen? The things who used to conquer us, now it is our time to conquer them. Yung kasalanan na dati kang natatalo, ngayon tayong magkoconquer sa kasalanan because God is upon us. Because the Spirit of God is upon us. Because the favor of God is upon us. Your light will never be the same again. You are called to demolish the works of the enemy. Amen? Sabi mo nga, I have called to demolish the works of the enemy. Sabi doon sa Luke chapter 10 verse 19, I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Nothing will harm you. Because you can even trample on snakes and scorpions, meaning to say, it's not the literal scorpions. They are not the literal snakes, meaning to say those sins and temptation who use to victimize you, who used to, to conquer you, but now, today, you're going to conquer them. Amen? You are called to demolish the works of the enemy. And another one, lastly, but not the least, as I pray, you are called to display, manifest, and manifest God's power among our people. Gagamitin ka ng Diyos upang maging daluyang ka ng pagpapala at display person ka ng kapangyarihan, ng, kapag, ng pag-ibig, ng pagpapatawad ng Diyos sa buhay mo. If your life has no value before, before the eyes of this man, but I'm telling you right now, now that you have a born again experience, now that you become a child of God, God is going to make you as a display of His manifold power to manifest God's power among our people. Gagamitin ka ng Diyos na magpapalaya ka sa buhay ng mga tao na ay naalipin ng kasalanan because that's what you are called for. Not because of your strength, but because God's Spirit is upon you. Amen? And as I end up, I would like everyone to stand up and I would like to pray for you right now. Kapatid, tandaan mo ito, no principalities, no evil scheme, no adversities nor adversaries can conquer you right now for as long as you're going to arise and attack any fruit foothold, any strongholds of the enemy in your life. Maybe you're as you're listening right now, you are being bombarded and you are being attacked in your thoughts. Amen. Maybe you're asking your life, does God really love me? Does God really still in me? Am I still saved? Amen? Is there still another hope after this? Meron pa mang pag-asa sa mga bagay nito. Those are the kind of battle that we have to win and God has called us to win. Kapatid, ang telling on this, hindi ka tinawag na Lord, ni Lord upang maging talunan. Tinawag ka ng Panginoon so that you can display God's might and God's power and God's miracle through you and for the people around you. Ulitin ko po, tinawag ka ng Diyos upang maging daluyang ka ng pagpapala ng kapangyarihan ng Himala ng Diyos, hindi lamang para sa iyo, o hindi para sa mga tao, sa paligid mo, para sa pamilya mo, para sa iglesia mo, para sa bansa mo, para sa syudad mo. You know the reason why? And the only way you can do that, you have to arise and attack. Because God has given you so much power. Amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. You are God's demolition man. Amen? Tinawag ka ni Lord para maging demolition man ng Panginoon. What are you going to demolish? To demolish any foothold and the strongholds of the enemy. We have been trained and equipped for a battle through training. Use them. When we face life's battle, life's real battle, not inside the church. Most of the battle we face is not inside the church. Most of the battle we face are outside the church in our workplace, sometimes in our family. Amen? Whenever you are not in the company of fellow believers. Kapatid, 
Gusto ko yung malaman mo ito. As everyone is to stand up right now, we are not just called for victory. Rather, we are called from victory to victory. Hindi ka tinawag ni Lord para managumpay. Tinawag ka ni Lord mula sa katagumpayan because the God you are serving is a God of victory. On the cross, He has defeated the sting of death. On the cross, He has defeated the sin, the power of the sin in you. On the cross, He has defeated the unforgiveness in you. On the cross, God has defeated the unbelief in you. On the cross, God has defeated even the biggest trial that you could ever face in your life from now on. Every time you're losing hope, always look on the cross. The cross that is the image of God's victory in your life. Doon sa cross, pinagtagumpayan ni Lord noong hinarap niya ang kamatayan at ibinigay niya ang kanyang buhay para sa kapatid, tanda mo ito. If God is a victorious God, there's nothing can stand in front of you if God is with you. Ulitin ko po ito. If God is with you, nothing can stand in front of you that you cannot overcome because God's power is upon your life right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. And He shall protect us from any harmful attack of the enemy. Not only that God is going to protect us, but God is going to empower us to demolish any stronghold and the foothold who used to ruin your life, who used to ruin your family, who used to, to, to conquer you in one way or another. But right now, God is telling you, arise and attack because God is giving you victory from victory to victory in your life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I would like to pray for you right now, Father God. Hallelujah. Let's close our eyes and bow down our head before God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father God in heaven, Lord, as I come before you right now, Lord, that may we realize, oh God, that in this battle, there's no way we can win if you are not with us. Father God, I ask for the anointing of your Holy Spirit, for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, Father God. Lord, that may we realize, Lord, that every one of us is now engaged in a spiritual battle daily. Lord, from the moment that we, w- we wake up, Father God, from the moment that we work and engage with other people, battle is all around. Lord, make us become more uh, conscious, Lord, about this battle. And I believe, O oh Lord, as we face another week, another week of battle, Father God, Lord, empower your people. Father God, empower and encourage your people, Father God, Lord, from any sort of discouragement, from any sort of dismay, from any sort of fear, from any sort of anxiety, Father God, in our lives, in our being, Father God, Lord, that may we realize, Lord God, that, Lord, that it's not our time, that it is our time to attack and not to be attacked anymore because the best defense is our offense against the enemy. Father God, today, Lord, give us the clarity of everything that you want us to do. Give us, Lord, a clear direction. I pray, Father God, that for those who are ill right now, Father God, I pray for healing. For those who are confused and there's there's no clarity, Father God, of the directions, Lord, that you continuously enlighten, Father God, their path right now. Gabayan mo po, Panginoon, ang bawat sa amin. And even, Father God, for those who are waiting and and Father God, and longing for miracles in the lives. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I lift them up unto you. Those brethren, Lord, that I'm having right now, watching all over the world, Father God, meet them where they would like you to meet them, Father God. Katagpuin mo kami, Panginoon, Father God, sa oras na ito, at aming buong pamilya. Father God, thank you for the victory that we have in you. Thank you, Father God, for the victory that we are no longer to be attacked but it is our time to arise and attack because you are with us and we have victory in you. We thank you Lord and to you we give all the praises and all the glory. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you. Thank you God for 
another message that you have given us through your preacher for today. And I know and I pray that everyone has been blessed by the message. So um, this has been a very victorious service, uh, worship service. So um, I just want to end with another victory song. So uh, may I call the worship team to lead us um, for the victory song. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's um, praise God and just sing out this victory song before we go, before we depart. This is our time to just give thanks once again. Amen. Hallelujah. My Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, I will never be the same because you came the same cause you came near from the everlasting to the world we live the father's only son cause you live come on Woo! you live and you die you rose again on high you open the way for the everyone. Um, may you continue to be um, blessed and continue to have that word in your heart that you heard today and just be encouraged for this next week ahead that we have. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless. See you next Sunday. Just your love, it's enough for me. Now I'm lying, cause you live in me. Your genuine love shines through me. My heart is yours to serve faithfully.
It's your love, it's enough for me 